Hey fellows, this is the airsoft test video that I should have done a long time ago um, because Taijin uh, has come out with a new airsoft unit. It's available at IMAX and uh, that's what I'm going to be evaluating here today. Now, previously, these were the basic airsoft units. These are all Hanglong airsoft units. These are the only three colors I've ever seen them in, but uh, they're all exactly the same. Um, when you get them, that's pretty much what you get. It's got the motor in it, but there's no wiring, no trigger switch, none of that. And one thing that's changed on the new ones is the placement of the trigger switch, and we'll get to that in just a second. So anyway, those are the old ones. I had one uh, give up on me, so I decided it was time to replace it with the Taijin unit. Now, they're easy to identify because when you get them, first of all, you can see you're going to get more than you do with the uh, Hang Long units. It comes with the motor but it also comes with the sh uh, shield that holds all the wiring in place the three wires that run up into the turret to the uh, um, to the uh, LED the red LED that comes on when you fire and uh, I believe the elevation unit but the easiest way to do it when you're changing an airsoft unit is to just pop this screw out take this shield off you can pop the motor right out and as long as your motor is still good usually when an airsoft gun goes you hear a really horrible grinding noise and that tells you that the motor's still turning and it's still good so there's no reason to throw it away just pop the motor out put the new airsoft unit in and uh, put everything back but if your motor's fried this does come with all the wiring it comes with the three pin plug and if you do swap the motor then you got a lot of extra cool stuff left over and it comes with the trigger switch now that's the difference between the two is the placement of the trigger switch I'm not sure how well this will show up in the video but if you look closely, you can see that the, the hole that the trigger switch goes into on the Hang Long Airsoft unit is towards the front. But on the Taijin, it goes in at the back. Let me pop this off here and I'll show you what's going on. Sorry, I still haven't gotten any 70s porn music. Um, there's your trigger switch. It's got a hole for the screw and it's got a small uh, little location pin. And the location pin goes into that little hole right there. Now, if you look at the Hang Long unit, those two holes are reversed. It's got the larger hole towards the rear and the smaller hole towards the front. So what happens is the Hang Long trigger switch is basically mirror image. Instead of going on like this, it goes on like this with the pin towards the uh, front and the whole trigger switch towards the front of course this would be turned 180 degrees but anyway you do get the trigger switch with the uh, Taijin unit so we're gonna start with the Panther G because this is my worst airsoft unit uh, it's pretty weak and uh, the only reason I haven't replaced it is because I'm gonna run it until it dies because on the Panther G when you open them up they have a different barrel elevation system from any other tank that I've ever seen and it's going to be a little job to change the airsoft unit. Not that I can't do it, but uh, I figured I'll just run this one until it gives up. So for BBs, I'm using, these are 0 0.12 gram. It says Crossman, but I noticed that the Crossman only has one S. So I'm wondering what's going on with that. I think the Crossman BB people that are famous in the United States, pretty sure they have two S's in their name. So, but anyway, those are the 0.12s. These are the 0 0.20 grams. Uh, they say the white ones are biodegradable, but I have my doubts. And the black ones are the 0.25 grams, or a quarter of a gram. So those are the ones that we're going to be trying out here. I'm going to show you three different tanks with three different airsoft units. Um, two of them are Taijin, and one of them is a, a, a Mado with the Taijin unit in it. So anyway, all of the tanks have been preloaded with three rounds of the green... 0.12, which I believe are the closest to the yellow BBs that come with the tank. I believe those are 0.12. Now down there for a target, I've got two sheets of just regular 20-pound copy paper taped in the mouth of a cardboard box. Now this airsoft unit, well, that was a black round. Misfire. Obviously airsoft units are not perfect. Well, you saw what a black unit will do. Sometimes if you put a few more rounds in, they'll work better. Not making much of a case for airsoft here, am I? Missed 
misfire. Misfire. Well, I might be replacing this one real quick. There we go. Misfire. Sometimes every other round. Well, the Panther's just going to be a real pain today and not give us any action. So, anyway, like I said, that is my worst airsoft unit. So we'll park this one out of the way. Shut her down. Now the next tank is the Panzer IV. Now this is still the stock airsoft unit. This is a Taijin tank, but it has a stock airsoft unit which is similar to the Hang Long units in color and uh, switch placement and all that. The only reason I got this out today is because I don't know why, but this is the strongest airsoft unit that I've ever seen. This is my most powerful airsoft unit in the Panzer IV. Uh, I don't know if I just got lucky or what, but uh, this thing, it's got three rounds of the .12 BBs in it. It blows right through the paper. No, it bounced off. Yeehaw. Still bouncing off, but it's making a nice divot in the paper. So we'll put a couple rounds of the .25 in there and see what that does. Now, airsoft units are funny. Sometimes you'll think it's empty and you reload it with a different color BB and the first color comes out for the first couple rounds. They do all kind of strange things. Now that's the uh, .25. And it's bouncing off there. But it's leaving a nice divot in the paper. Ooh, that one went almost all the way through. Repeatability is, I don't know, it's not like you're going to get a shot group you can cover with a cigarette, man, you know what I mean? So anyway, we'll get the P4 out of there and we'll get to the new unit. Like I said, that was my strongest um, unit of the older style. So now we've got the Mato tank that I just put the uh, Taijin airsoft unit in. Now that's one good thing about airsoft units, because they're spring operated, when your battery starts to get low, uh, it won't affect the uh, operation of your airsoft gun. It cocks itself back it, and, uh, and it fires and that's it. Um, sometimes the smoke units will work a little more poorly when, you, when your battery starts to get low, but not so with the airsoft. That one blew right through. That's the new Taijin unit. Again, blew right through both sheets of paper into the box. Wow. <laughs> I don't know if the holes are showing up for you guys. Okay, we are now out of ammo. So we're going to try some of the uh, 0.25 gram BBs in there. See how they do. But you can see for yourself that this new unit is definitely stronger than what we were getting before. I don't know how to measure this. Uh, what would be a good system? Maybe muzzle velocity, feet per second? I don't know. I think the rifles and pistols are measured in feet per second. I'm about four feet away from the target. That's why the tape measure is laying there so I can try to be equal. Okay, now the heavier unit uh, bounced off. That one didn't. It went through. That one bounced. I think the one that went through got lucky and hit another hole. Now you notice track recoil in these that you didn't see in the Panzer IV. That's because the P4 has the uh, um, it has a dragon in it from Kevin at RC Tanks, the anti-track recoil device, and that one works absolutely flawlessly. So anyway, there's your airsoft test, and I believe that uh, we have just demonstrated that the new units are, in fact, more powerful than the old. And as long as we're here, I keep telling you guys about uh, the upgrade to hobby grade that's coming, and one of the tanks is... Um, is ready. Not sure why my radio is beeping at me. It's got 10.4 volts. Anyway, this is the Turnigy 9X radio. Um, and I'm not sure why it's beeping. But uh, that's what's tiger or powering this Tiger tank. Now, all that's in this Tiger right now is a RC2TG board from Kevin down at RC Tanks Australia. But the control that I get with this board is just ridiculous compared to what I was getting with the stock Taijin or Hang Long units. 
One of the reasons I haven't done the uh, upgrade video yet is because I'm still waiting on parts. I'm waiting for a gecko, a viper, and a relay switch. The viper is going to allow me to control the sound of the volume, the volume of the sound, hello, from channel 6 on the radio. I'll be able to turn the sound up and down. I'll also be able to use one of these two switches to turn my smoke on and off. That's, uh, well, the Viper is going to give me the sound. The Relay is going to give me the smoke on and off. And um, the Gecko is going to give me proportional speed on the turret. Right now, even though Kevin's board is a great one, it is limited by the Taijin MFU. It's still got off and on for uh, turret rotation and for gun elevation, but the Gecko will correct that. Then the uh, relay switch is going to be for the on-off of the smoke because the, uh, the board can't handle the full voltage of the smoke unit, but it can handle the voltage of the relay. So just like in a car, we'll use a little bit of power to control a lot of power. But this tank has just really really come together this used to be an all plastic taijan tiger one and it's now when i take it out and drive it around it's just phenomenal i've also got another tiger one that i'm setting up for ir that's got a rc 2tg and a mako board and it will also eventually get a gecko and a viper and a relay for the smoke and uh they're running on the both running on the turning g9x eventually i'll probably also put the yag panther on the 9x and the rest are mostly airsoft so i'll just keep them uh, with the Taijan Electronics, because really for airsoft, that's pretty much all you need. I'm just going crazy with these because I can. Ooh, that's a good unit in that. A little closer, though. That might have been all for the ammo. This doesn't have the Komodo in it yet, because uh, right through. Misfire. I think I'm out of ammo. But anyway, um... I'm having a little problem with electromagnetic interference, so I've ordered LiPo batteries and charger and LiPo bag and uh, low voltage alarms and, you know, all that good stuff. So when that gets here, that'll also go in this tank, and that'll make the uh, hobby upgrade uh, video even better. So for those of you that are waiting for that, it's coming. Just give me a couple more weeks, all right? Okay, guys, so there's the airsoft comparison, and from what I'm seeing, the new units from Taijin are definitely more power. They're a little bit more expensive. You can usually get the Heng Longs about 2 for 16 to $18, and the Taijins are $10 for one. So it's, you know, it's not that much of a difference. Eric's got them down at IMAX. I'm pretty sure Gene's got them at Artistic Hobbies, but they're the new Taijin Airsoft units, and they're identifiable because first they're black in color, and I don't know if you'll be able to see this on the video, but right here in raised letters it says Taijin. Okay, fellas? So there's your uh, evaluation. See you next time.